As a country, we can't progress unless we all progress. It's no good shutting our eyes to Indigenous communities and the issues facing us and thinking it's there and it doesn't matter. It does matter. Lockhart River is a, a small, very remote community. There's about 600 people here that have come together, various clan groups from mostly sea people, uh, but some from the inland, uh, that were brought together to the Lockhart River mission. It's a very quiet community, very isolated, but we do things that we can do. They have a, a history where they're really forced to be there. You know? They were under uh, very strict conditions, uh, more like endangered labourers, and they were used and treated without respect for their customs and for their language. So often in Indigenous policy you see initiatives and things that are put in place for election cycles, three years. Because we're an Indigenous remote community, we, we rely on government funding and that creates barriers, you know. There's a lot of stop-start programs or dead-end programs, as I call them. It's just visits and go, but there was no training or empowering to take responsibility. A lot of well-meaning and well-intentioned organisations, including government, come and decide what needs to be done and it's not working and there's a lot of money wasted. I think the community is, has lost its direction. There's a lot of young ones just walking around with no jobs. For me to see my community able to see the children, you know, walking around, I don't know what they're going to do. I couldn't believe that this was Queensland, this was Australia, and, and we, we still had such disadvantage. Oh, a lot of things has come, has hit us hard. We haven't fallen. I saw very inspiring leaders who were trying to do great things for their community but really weren't getting the right assistance to do that. There was something else needed here for the community to be empowered and to create the community they wanted. Solutions need to come from within the community because that's the essence of empowerment for any human being. For us, we gotta make the changes. We have to step in, we have to break the gap. Puya means heart. Puya is the life force of our people. It's about trying to get the strength from the inside looking out again and make it better for the next generation that's going to come along. People would say here, we want strong Puya because with strong Puya we can do anything. Before, everybody were doing their own little thing. What I can see now is everybody's trying to work together. The idea was to try and capture some of the, the, the weakness in the community and try and steer it in a, in a better direction. So our aim in the Puya Foundation is to help our people in the community. Yeah. We listen to what the community want. It's community led and community run. The board is made up of local members um, and it's a vehicle from which people within Lockhart River can, can identify issues and identify needs within the community. You know, the three areas, the, the young kids, the employment for the young men, and the women are getting empowered. I think when something works, I think you've got to support it. It was identified that the early years was a mess, really, the early years learning, and yet that was the critical part for life and for life chances for children here. And we're looking at from zero to five sort of thing because we're actually going to try to help the mothers when the babies are still in the tummy. So I think that we're working with them, setting them on a straight track sort of thing, will give them a good start in their life. If we can create that space here where the young children here like going to the school and want to come, it's like they grow wings and they can do what they want to do and they can run around and be who they want to be. By the time they go to the school just over the fence there, they're happy to go there. Aboriginal people are very strong in their culture and family ties is still very, very strong. This is why Queer Foundation has taken that opportunity so that we can grasp the younger ones that are growing up to be good leaders when they grow up. 
when our time's long gone, they're going to be the future leaders and we need to make sure that every ounce of the power of education is invoked. I didn't know that Montessori could, you know, change, transform your kids. They'll, they'll learn heaps here, yeah, they'll learn how to share, how to play good. It made me teach Lao Me how to do things properly. I like to see my grandchildren learn from stage one, right through that school day, go to high school and graduate. At the heart of all of this is education and doing every single thing we can to ensure every child here has every opportunity to develop every aspect of their potential, enriched by uh, their, uh, their culture. Standard education models are not really designed to um, cater for Indigenous culture. We went towards sitting down behind a desk when we were younger, in our younger generations. We were given that spear, given that fishing line. It was hands-on, hands-on learning. A uh, very memorable experience for me was inviting the uh, Puya Foundation uh, to Admiralty House in Sydney when I was Governor General and to bringing some people in whom I knew would be interested in what's happening here. So I had some philanthropists and some academics and some business people. She held this most wonderful meeting. I remember Tim coming back and saying to me he's met this wonderful group of people and he'd like the foundation to support. As a family we, we lived on a cattle station in central Queensland. From that I got a real understanding what, um, you know, the disadvantages of, 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 um, of being uh, in remote areas. Tim Fairfax suggested I have a look at the Puya Foundation. I rang up uh, Denise the very next day and uh, I said we could help. He offered a small building here. We were absolutely delighted and shocked and thrilled and over the moon about that. Um, but we went back to government and the state government gave us more money. So it grew from uh, what I thought was going to be a two or three hundred thousand dollar project to what you see here today, which I think is well over three million dollars. Our work is to empower people to have their dreams and to support them to achieve those dreams by getting their confidence, their skills, the connections, all of the things that you need to be successful and to move towards what you want to create. The Women's Leadership Program is about building individual and collaborative leadership in the community. We see women um, speaking out more. So instead of sitting back in forums and not saying what they think and not bringing forth their own wisdom, they're actually speaking out about what they think and what they want. It, it brings up the voice or brings them out of the shell, make them, you know, come alive or something. You can talk and people, are, you become like a role model for our little, for our little kids here. And even for the younger, younger ladies that still are going to school. I've actually seen it in my body, like I didn't even realise it was there. You know, we talk about feelings and, you know, connections, uh, sociometry and, you know, all these words. I've actually learnt a lot. The majority of the men we're working with are unemployed. We're assisting them to get the confidence and skills to get jobs and that makes a huge difference in families and for those men they're happy that they can provide for their families um, and they've got a place in the world. Me, I like just doing grandsman job right here. Like, same thing like watering and weeding and keeping it clean right here. So you can get recognised here, then you probably move to another good job or something like that, you know. That's how they want it too, like the part we follow. People are being part of the program because they own the program. Uh, they're the ones that are on their journey of opening up and finding who they truly are and allowing it out. Our men have gone from here, they've been headhunted to other jobs and they didn't have those jobs before they got the training and confidence from the work they had here.
One of our biggest challenges that we face now is having ongoing funding to run the programs. It's not a three month program or project that you can run in, spend your money, run out and say it's fixed. It's, it doesn't work like that. We have to be in this for the long run. We have to trust and, and, and listen to what the community is saying. And change is not linear, it's cyclic and it takes time. The work won't stop. I mean, to some extent my worry is that the work just catapults because in catapulting it just puts so much more work on us and we need to be able to sustain what we've st established already. We know what works, we need support to continue and grow what we know is working. When people invest in peer programs, they're changing the direction of people's lives. 